Hi, I'm Heidi Hoger. I am Creativity School's Educational Director, and at Creativity School, we believe in inspiring and empowering the creators of tomorrow. And so I would like to invite you to join me and my friend Simone Shin as we discuss her creative journey from childhood to becoming a musician and illustrator of children's books. So sit back, relax, don't forget to like and subscribe, and enjoy our visit. How are you? Good. Thanks for agreeing to meet me. Yeah. With me. <laughs> I, I didn't know you played the guitar. I see your guitar back there. Um, yes. What? That's sort of related to a lot of the things that we might talk about. Ah, yeah. I just feel like your like, creativity is just like overflowing in every direction. Wow. Guitar is more like kind of like everything else where my parents made me take violin lessons. Oh, and I say oh, made me because I was really little. It was like six years old. And they're like, what instrument do you want to play? And my cousin and my brother played violin and my other cousin played flute. And they were kind of like, you should play flute. You should play violin. It's cool. Or like they were trying <laughs> to get me. And I just chose violin. It was just random, you know? Right. And yeah. that became my life from age six to 18. I, every Sunday I had violin lessons, you know? Really? So violin and guitar and violin music. lessons. And then by the time I was in junior high, high school, like, you know, I knew how to play flute. So if you know how to play one, you can sort of read the music for the others. Yeah. So I learned a little bit of flute and my sister brought home a trombone so I could play a little bit of that. That's pretty awesome. Any other instruments that you? Well, those, so yeah. I didn't really have lessons for those flute. I did take lessons mm -hmm. just because I, I was lucky. Piano too. I got lucky because my sister took flute lessons from the girl's friend of my brother who was in high school at the time. And so she already was coming to our house and giving a cheap lesson. So my mom threw me and she's like, you can teach her too. And I turned and I did piano lessons. I think we, we asked my parents for piano, me and my sister, but then I don't know, piano is hard. I yeah. don't know. He thinks at once. I don't know. In my head, it was it harder is. than violin. <laughs> no, yeah. Sorry. No, I grew up playing the piano. I, my mom was a pianist and she taught me piano lessons and yeah. Yeah. It it's hard. Like you are reading a language while both hands and in multiple notes. And yeah. It's like you're reading two books at once. It's yes. different than violin, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Like I found a lot of like artists, like a, you know, painting artists, you know, what you think of as traditional art are also musicians. I think that's like, they just seem to accompany each other. It's a, a way. Well, I started them. out before. So one of the things that's related is that my parents are the type of people who took put me in extracurricular, obviously violin. So when I was really interested in drawing and stuff, they also would put me in summertime art classes and all those things. Oh, I had a couple private art lessons because in Korea, it's very common to have like maybe a private art, just like a piano teacher. Really? So the piano, it, it was all coincidental. My parents weren't seeking this stuff out actively. Yeah. It's just the piano teacher we had was Korean mm -hmm. and she had a friend who was just out of art college who needed a job. <laughs> so she was like, do you mind if your kids get like a little mini lesson and she'll go to your house? And my parents were so busy working. They're like, well, if she comes to our house, that's fine. So I had for, for a couple of years, I had an art teacher and wow. she taught me and my little sister basics. We were pretty young. Yeah. And watercolor and drawing and all that stuff. And But this was in America. Your parents yes. were from yes. Korea, but you were born here, right? Yes. Yeah. So this okay. is only in the United States, but this woman was from Korea. So she didn't know right. English, right. but right. she taught us shading and all those, you know, kind of like <laughs> to a more advanced level stuff. Yeah, I'm like, it wasn't fancy. It was just this college student needed a job, kind yeah. of, you know, and we got lucky and she came to our house and then eventually we just got older and then you know scaled down the extracurriculars to what whatever we remained our interest is you know in so is that kind of when you started loving art or was it before that and then your parents were... I think it was before I think I was really good at drawing and all that stuff mm -hmm. and I independently would make things out of car like dollhouses I still have them dollhouses I made a I would make a lot of things out of cardboard 3d because I just thought it was cool so I made out of cardboard and I covered them with construction paper so they were like colored the right way yeah oh my, my parents gosh. just saw that I would independently do these things mm -hmm. so they were like oh we'll put her in these lessons you know like how how did that affect your love of art were you ever like uh no this isn't what I want to do I know my uh, yes I never like, wanted to do it as a job it was just like they 
it was fun to learn. And I thought like, cool, you know, when you get a skill set, you know, because learning to shade and all those things, you feel like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. I thought it was so good when I was a little kid, you know, because I could do like a 3D <laughs> object or something. Um, so that helps your, uh, it helps your self-esteem. It really made me feel like, oh, I'm really, really good at this compared to other little kids, you know? Okay. So you were not in art classes in high school, but what made you decide that you went to art center, right? Yeah. So at the time, my parents encouraged me to go to art college right out of high school. But I was, you know, hesitant because I didn't have any high school art credits. Right. I did by senior year. I was really into charcoal portraiture, like realistic ones. Mm -hmm. So I had this obsession with art on the side. And I suppose I could have put together a portfolio, but I didn't want to do this is me as teenager not wanting to do what my parents wanted me to do. Yeah. Because their 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 premise was this is awful, but this is a long time ago. They just did not think I was smart enough to get into a regular college because to them it's like, you have to be an engineer. You have to be a doctor. Right. Otherwise it's like, why go to college, you know, or like I was viewing it like, man, you know, I don't want to go to art college because in their eyes, I can't achieve anything else. Right. And I also logically was like, what do you do with an art degree? Even in high school, I was like, what do people do? Because they don't teach you in high school that you can have a career. Yeah, All you're ever taught is like, it's fun, you know, and in the United States, it's different than Korea because I took a class once, you know, I've taken like Korean based classes Mm -hmm. and they're more, um, more emphasis on what you can get a job in like design school or you could go to college and then do this. But in the United States, there's a lot more emphasis with children to just art is anything you could do whatever you want, but there's no concept of like, well, there is a structure. You do have to, if you do want to be an artist, you will have to learn (laughs) the essentials, the basics. Um, And you can get a job if you work hard, but we are, we don't teach that in the United States very much, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's more about creating, creating an expression and things like that, which is great. It's through art or anything. I think all of that is important. And I like how Ari sort of incorporates money management because in the end, we never talk about art to children as something that you could have a job from. So when I was in high school, I just thought, what what job can you get? Like, really, I was like, there's no, what are you supposed to do with an art degree? So I said no at first. But I mean, that's what we teach our kids, you know, without even recognizing it. Yeah, the starving artist mentality. Yeah, that, you know, if you go out and you do what you love, you're going to starve doing it. I I think that I didn't go to art school because of that and a lot of other teenage reasons. So I went to um, liberal arts college and then I, you know, tried to get jobs doing this and that, that sort of melted into me, ended up going, ending up to go to art school anyway, because I had self-taught myself guitar and I had a, a few year stint in there where I was in several different bands and I was recording music and I was, I had a, like a mini album and I was wow. performing as a freelance singer songwriter in Los Angeles in different little yes. venues by myself. But I think that really helps because I did not have any art po- po- portfolio at all when mm-hmm. I decided to go to art center. <laughs> At that point, I was just like, you know, I already knew colleges just need you to convince them that you will be successful somehow. So I got some advice from a friend of what sort of images to put in a portfolio. And then my whole process was just like, well, I've already freelanced in music without any formal training. Mm -hmm. I was able to get these gigs. Get, get these gigs and do all these things, you know, um, and I, I'm assuming a freelance illustrator will be a similar process when I get out, you know. So I almost did it hesitantly, like, ah, should I even be, I almost like halfway didn't want to. It was just a very weird decision in my yeah. 20s, you know. And then when I got in and went to orientation, I was so shocked. I was like, what did I get myself into? I was like, I know it takes this much work, but but I just had to be like mentally prepared. It's almost like mentally preparing to have a baby or something that you know is going to be a lot of work and will be rewarding. But I was like, man, should I do this? So I was like, I guess I'll do it, you know? And I buckled down and (laughs) went to Art Center. And Art Center is no joke. I mean, it's one of the best. So I, I know the instructors are, some of them are very demanding. So your parents once, I mean, were they like, yeah, you're finally doing what, what we wanted you to. Or No, I by then, you. see, I thought they would be all like, yay, you know, yeah. you're finally doing what we want. But I guess yeah. by then, mid-20s, my mom was like, are you sure that's what you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why are you guys always like not on the same vibe as you? <laughs> but I did it anyway. And then I kind of felt guilty the whole time I was at Art Center. I was like, I really needed to make it worthwhile because 
it's different than when you're 17, 18 going into college. This was more like I really felt I had to make a career out of it. So every process, every step of the way, every class I had, I was like hinting at like, so how do you um, get a job? Doing it? <laughs> you know, it was all in preparation of like actually having a career, you know? Yeah. Tell me how valuable this is going to be in my future. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think people don't realize for their kids that like we think of artists as like Van Gogh or, you know, or even what I do, which is illustration, some freelance thing. But the very small amount of people actually go into that career field because it's hard. But that takes a very specific type of personality. But art and design is almost everything. It's, you know, the graphic design. You There's plenty of desk jobs where you can get graphic design jobs. You, you could do what art used to do, which is game design and creative director of like a gaming company. A lot of people go into games because they're so into gaming themselves as children. Yeah. They were into yeah. that. And animation. I know a lot of play people who do animation. Some mm-hmm. do freelance. Some work in-house. But there are just so many art jobs that are, if you're more of like a nine-to-five art person or a creative team person, there are so many jobs that you could get into. I mean, it's all hard to, it's just like everything else. It's very competitive, but Mm -hmm. there's a lot of work there, but people don't talk about those fields as art when they are. And maybe they separate them in their mind as design, but arts and are sort of melted it all together. I mean, I could technically go that way if I had wanted to. Yeah. Um, The only reason I went this way is because of my personality. Right. Uh, So you went into, you went into illustration specifically. Illustration, but not like in-house, like for an animation company or something. Right. Right. More independent. Yeah. But that, like I said, that takes a very specific personality. So if you're going to art school and then, you know, you have that personality who can, I'm just going to sit there and create my own song and then record it through a recording studio and then go to a bar and be like, hey, can, will you guys let me perform? Not everyone could. Do that. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, not everyone. And I'm aware of that. Like I sort of went into illustration knowing what sort of field it is. It's kind of like all you and you're it's like your own self-contained business. Right. Um, if you have that entrepreneurial spirit and you think that you can do your own thing, then by all means do it. But don't, um, I think a lot of people think that that's what art is. Like everyone has to be like that. Not at all. There's so many different types of jobs. It's kind of whatever motivates you. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, if I were to give advice to parents and all that, it's sort of like, what do you want for your, you know, what kind of personality does your child have? And do they, and for anything, really, do they want it that badly? Because if they do, they'll be able to make some sort of a success out of it eventually. You know, I know as a mother myself, you know, I want certain things for my kids. I want them, you know, it's not necessarily about the money, but it's about being secure and successful and yeah, want that for our kids. But, you know, at the same time, allowing them to, to find that path and to pursue that. But if you implement one. that and you implement sort of, always needing financial security also they will go if even if they're an artist they will most likely go into the field with that in the back of their head all the time yeah. and they'll create their own future based on those concepts you know yeah is that you think you do you feel that's something that you did like you always had that in in your mind that you need to be able to support yourself and um yes I mean I had a very bad concept of how money was made my whole life yeah <laughs> I mean, I was making it, but it was, I don't know. It took me a while to figure things out. But um, I would say whatever you implement in children, it'll, even if it's not related to art, if they want to do art, they're going to implement it in their practice anyway, somehow. Mm -hmm. So what I learned at Art Center and through after Art Center is that it's not that some people make it, some people don't. It's essentially that some people work harder and never give up. (laughs) Yeah, That is it. That is it. There's no other secret to it except this person just didn't give up. Um, and then I had friends who were up there, like they, you know, teachers thought they were all the students thought they were great. And when they were not getting the work that they thought they would be getting right after art school, as a young person coming out, who's like, you should be getting all this work and not immediately get it, getting it. It really affected them. Like, wait, why is, <laughs> yeah. why when wasn't I getting all these art directors, um, you know, coming at me? And I was like, it doesn't work that way. I got a crap load of rejections, but I'm used to that. You just got to keep going. Yeah, when your self-esteem is wrapped up in the praise of other people, you're yeah. not going to progress when you're not getting that praise. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is such an amazing thing that, you know, that you were able to do. Like one of the things that I I've been taught is, you know, the children are like chalkboards and whatever message you write, that is what they think of themselves. But I mean, you know what? You're right. Because when I was little, everyone was like, you're so good at art. Ah, <laughs> the, kids did, the parents yeah. did, you know, my parents did. 
when I was very young. And then it didn't really translate that way when I was at art school, because everyone is so good at Art Center, you know. Right. Um, And I got a little frustrated, but I also, you know, with the violin lessons, my parents never made me miss a single day. They drilled it in me that I just have to just keep going and never give up, you know. So I just kept going and I put in the work, you know, no question asked. I didn't say like, oh, this is too hard or, you know, I got to stop. I was just like, oh, well, got to do it. <laughs> try again, you know? So I think your parents were really like instrumental in like molding you into this person who is resilient and who believes in herself and, and pushes through and does hard things, whether they meant to or not. And then, you know, <laughs> illustration, and I think it's important, illustration is not, you know, you got to go, if it's your own self-contained business, like you want to be a children's book illustrator, say it's very specific like that. You have to learn um, just with anything. It's just sort of life advice. You have to learn to go with the flow. Maybe you won't end up there, but you'll end up somewhere else in art. Cause I never yeah. planned to be a children's book illustrator yeah. from the beginning. I thought I didn't really have a plan. I think in the beginning I thought, oh, I'll go into product design because I thought I have to be practical with my art. Right. But I didn't go into product design. I just went wherever I was advancing more in my head, <laughs> sort of like whatever the teachers were like, oh, you're really, really good at this particular. So I started to go that direction. There was no set plan. And I thought to myself, I'm going to make one children's book before the age of 40, just because that was the goal of my te- my children's book teacher. <laughs> that was his goal. So I was like, that's a good goal. That gives me plenty of time to just like, yeah. and when I didn't make my own book, I thought author illustrator also, you know, but then when it came time to like, I was settling and having a family, I thought, well, I really want to freelance specifically because it'll give me the freedom to raise my child and work mm-hmm. from home. Yeah. Um, and I, I learned more through um, just through the process and how you need an agent. And then it just sort of went from there. It wasn't like, it was never my plan, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, everything your... was mostly in sync. Cause at the time I had a child and then I was like, all right, children's books, that makes sense. So every year that he grew up, you know, it just, you know, melded together pretty well. So, so this is women's history month. Do you think that, and this is, I know maybe an odd question, but do you think being a woman has a different um, weight you know, attached to it, you know, being in this industry. Oh, yeah, that's a heavy question. <laughs> I know, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I was at Art Center, when you see all the different career fields that you're not part of, I would say the animation course where you're sort of going that direction, that was heavily more like males versus females. Really? Well, huh. a lot more guys, I would say. Yeah. Um, and it was just like competitive in that way where every once in a while you'd see like a girl who did very successfully in they call it entertainment illustration you know but um it just seemed like a more guy oriented field at the time this is a long time ago I don't know and a lot there seemed to be a lot more women maybe in design in general there's like a design illustration course the different directions you go and gaming there would be some women but not as many um but I'm talking about like the older generation. I mean, this is like, I don't know, it's changing. It's obviously changed a lot since I've been in art school. Um, Yeah. And I do feel like there's this transition happening, like even in, you know, illustration, there's this transition happening where, you know, where it has been mostly, you know, male and white male dominated, you know, it's starting to, even those awards are being diversified. And yeah, I think around the time I graduated is when it started to diversify a lot. So the people that I was looking up to were older than me. Yeah. That was sort of like the blueprint was very specific. And then anyone who came after definitely a lot more women, you know, in this, in the same fields and all that. And women with a lot more uh, diverse backgrounds, you know, I, the children's book illustration industry is you know, a lot of writers are women, not necessarily the illustrators, but I feel like a lot of the writers are women mm-hmm. and a lot of people work in education or they don't, not, maybe not some work in science and all that, but that's a different, that's almost like teaching. Like I was really drawn to teaching, but teaching is very female oriented sort of yeah. population there. And it's not very diverse in that sense. And I remember when I went to the first children's book conference I ever went to, which was a long time ago, before it really got very diverse, the first thing I noticed when I went into the big auditorium full of all these people was, wow, everybody is a middle-aged white woman. Like that was like the majority, the vast majority (laughs) of the people who are in children's books, you know? And then since then, that conference has been, is so in cr- like crazy diversified they would make jokes year to year how they would get more men involved like oh there are more men here and now it's good amount of men and very diverse in both you know the different ethnicities but also 
age. It's different though now. It's different. I think it's so important to kids, and this is a librarian speaking, but you know, I think it's so important to kids to be able to see outside of their lives, you know, outside of whatever is going on in their community, you know, to see people in different situations in different parts of the world you know, believing other things and the way others live, you know, and I think children's literature is a great way to do it. And illustrations are one of my favorite things about books. And I love your illustrations. I think they are, I would say sweet, but that seems not, um, I think that's the right word for it. I mean, that's a whole other, like, you know, when I took the children's book class, what inspired me is that, and then the more conferences I went to, there's a lot of them, you know, like a lot of, creativity comes from them encouraging you to remember what it was like to read the books when you were little yeah. and how those books inspired you, you know? And I never realized until I was getting into it career-wise that I was like, wow, the children's books that I read, the picture books I read were very influential in my in my life, you know? And how can you add to that narrative, you know? the Yeah. I mean, because like you said, a lot of those books that we read as children were written by middle-aged white women, you know? What can we add more to that? men. Actually, when, when we were little, there was a lot more men, right? Like Eric There Clark, are a lot more, yeah. Jack Keys. I feel like they're all men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there have been a lot of... A lot of men. I think just throughout history, you know, men yeah. <laughs> have had that. <laughs> um, okay, so I I don't know what you're doing outside of of creativity school. Like we just when we talk, we talk about creativity school and oh you could I mean it's all weird now with the pandemic, right? Yeah, I know. So yeah. prior to you know, everyone having to work at home, I was working as an art teacher at mm-hmm. an art school for children. Okay. And then also doing children's books. So those are the two main things I was doing. Yeah. And then to make extra money, which at the time I thought it was extra money. And then it ended up being the main money I was making <laughs> um, was I went into substitute teaching. Oh. So I was just teaching all classes, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I thought that was ni- a nice deal because it was like, as a freelancer, sometimes I would have deadlines. So substitute teaching was good because there was no commitment to having to be there all the time. You could just say, mm-hmm. I'm not available at these times, you know? Yeah. So I sort of managed the substitute teaching in with all the other freelance work. Um, and then the pandemic happened and then substitute teaching disappeared because the schools were all closed. Yeah, there's no children here. <laughs> yeah, but I always had, I have children's books I'm working on, you know? Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, that was going to be my question. Like, what what are you working on outside of creativity school right now? You know, there's always that a book I was finishing. Yeah. And then one that's beginning right now, one that should be coming out. So there's all, it's always like, there's always something rolling through. There's always something. And it, yeah, it's like, sometimes you can't talk about it because it's like, I know contracts. And I know yeah. it's just very like, but I would always tell kids that, you know, like, guess how long it takes for a book to, or how long do you think it takes to make the illustrations for a book? You know, cause people don't know. Yeah. But on average, it used to be 10, two years before it ends up on the bookshelves from yeah when the illustrator even gets it. Um, all right. Well, I'll just ask you one one more question. So what would be like the one thing that parents and kids should know? I mean, I, I know you've already given some great advice, but if you were to wrap it all up and say, this is what you need to do. You know, just like for for my childhood, I noticed just giving them the the basics, the concept that they have to follow through with things, just like you would for anything, you know, the, the ability to stick with something and not give up and good practicing, g- good practices, you know, all of that stuff, the, all that practical stuff, you don't think it will somehow influence whether they'll become successful in the art world, but it heavily does. And then yeah. on top of that, also constantly encouraging their creative process and what they do, but mm-hmm. both are necessary, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's good advice. I mean, that's a good way to, um, to consolidate what you were saying earlier, you know, that we, we know that you worked hard, you believed in yourself and you had those, those core basics. I think, you know, having parents that believe in you and believe that you can find your way. I think that's important too. For sure. Yeah. Uh, Well, thank you Simone for meeting with me and for talking about everything. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was fun. I hope you enjoyed that visit as much as we did. If you would like to see some of Simone's illustrations, check out your local bookstore or library. To learn more about Creativity School, follow the links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can follow all of our creative journeys and videos from Creativity School.